Okay, welcome everybody to a lesson on news vocabulary. Most of these words are related to politics and news. So firstly, we call the man in charge of the country, the Prime Minister. We very often shorten that to PM, the PM. It will always have a the in front of it because there's only one PM. So the PM calls an election and that means he um, wants an election on a, in a certain, at a certain time and he decides that an election will happen in that month. So he calls an election in that month. And in the elections, you get to vote. Yeah, this is part of the electoral process. And you get to vote somebody in or you might get to vote somebody out. Now, this simply means if you vote somebody in, then then your vote helped that person to take that position. Maybe it's a ministerial post. Maybe it's a local councillor post. It could be any position. But you vote that person in if they take that position. But maybe you vote somebody out. So you vote for the other guy and that person loses their seat because you voted for the other guy. And because lots of people, the majority of people voted for the other guy. So you vote that candidate out then. You vote that politician out. And we say vote for somebody. So you vote for the Conservatives in this country, maybe. Or you can, vo you can vote for Labour. You can vote for the Liberal Democrats. You can vote for the UK Independence Party. There are lots of different, well, not that many, but there are a few different parties you can vote for in the UK. <clears throat> now, this phrasal verb, guys, it's always in the news to call for. And it can mean a couple of different things, really. But demand or necessitate. And so I just read in the newspaper that the leader of the opposition, yeah, that's the guy who leads the opposing party. At the moment, Labour is the opposition and Conservatives are in power. So the leader of the opposition called for the resignation of the Prime Minister. He called for the Prime Minister to resign. So remember, that's how we say it. He called for the Prime Minister to resign. Why? Because the Prime Minister had a party when he told everybody that it was incredibly dangerous to have parties. You might die. That's what he told everybody. You might die if you have a party or somebody might die if you have a party. And so no parties. And then he went and had a party with all of his friends. So the people are calling for his resignation. They are demanding his resignation. They are demanding that the Prime Minister resign. Yeah. Um, and this is a nice phrase. I think this phrase probably exists in all languages as well. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, the, this is the idea that when you're in a desperate situation, you'll need to take extreme action Yeah, in order to solve that problem. So desperate times necessitate desperate measures. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, if you want to talk about a rebellion... And we've seen some rebellion words in a previous class, rebellion, uprising. When there's a rebellion, very often the rebels, the people fighting against the authorities, want to overthrow the regime or overthrow the authorities, the ruling powers. They want to bring down the dictator, maybe, if they've got a dictator. Or maybe they want to bring down the government. Maybe they want to bring down the ruling party. Maybe they want to bring down the elite. Yeah, maybe they want to topple the monarchy. It could be a monarchy in the country, a king and a queen or a king. or, But you might want to topple the monarchy. You might want to topple the people in charge. Now, I want to make it clear that the regime is used to describe um, anybody who's an enemy. <laughs> yeah. The idea is that when you talk about the regime, you make it sound as though your enemy is undemocratic. And so all democratic part, uh, countries and civilised people um, decide to label their enemy as a regime. And in that way, they try and make everybody think that the enemy is some kind of fascist or Nazi or dictator, whereas the, their own country, of course, is uh, pure and white and holy. Now, if you abolish the monarchy, that means you get rid of the monarchy. So you can topple the monarchy or you can abolish the monarchy. And they are different. Because if you overthrow, bring down or topple the monarchy, that means you make sure that they are destroyed. So you might say something like this. You might say that the communists toppled the monarchy in Russia because they killed them, guys. Yeah, they toppled the monarchy and they killed them. Um, but abolish is slightly different than topple because you might you, you, I would say abolish is the right word to use if you're trying to get rid of the monarchy through 
other means than violence. <laughs> yeah. Um, these ones all describe a violent process, whereas abolition doesn't have to be a violent process. You know, the abolition, it, it can be sometimes. When I'm thinking about the abolition of slave, slavery, there was a civil war about that. And so sometimes it is a violent process. But the abolition of the monarchy is not necessarily a violent process. Maybe you all decide that the monarchy isn't ne needed anymore when you get rid of it for those reasons. But that very rarely happens, doesn't it, actually? Uh, usually the monarchy is toppled. They're, they have their heads cut off or something like that. So abolish the monarchy it means get rid of the monarchy. Yeah, um, in, in any way, not necessarily a violent way, in any way. Restore the monarchy means bring it back. Yeah, if you want to bring back your monarchy, put a person back on the throne and give them some kind of maybe just symbolic power or maybe real power, then you want to restore the monarchy. OK, um, a few more things about elections. We have a general election. That's when we choose the prime minister. We have local elections and that's when we choose councillors. And I think I'm going to spell this wrong, but I'm going to try my best. I think that that's how we spell councillors. Um, and they work for the local council. So these are local politicians. They're much smaller. They're much lower down the chain. Um, so you have general elections to choose a prime minister um, and, and to choose the ruling party, I should say. You to rule, choose the ruling party. Local elections to choose the local um, councillors. And then there is a by-election, uh, which is when you, uh, this is when this happened here, actually, just a few months ago. We had a by-election by in this constituency, which means in this area. The UK is divided up into many different constituencies. And e in each constituency, there's a little mini election. You might see it as that. And you choose your local MP. And MP, not to be confused with PM, MP means Member of Parliament. There are 666 or something like that, some demonic number, uh, Members of Parliament in the UK. And so they all sit in the Houses of Parliament. And it's because we have about 660, 70, I don't know how many there are, constituencies. OK. And when an MP dies, and that's what happened here, my MP was uh, stabbed. It was about five minutes walk <coughs> from my house. Um, and I'm, it was in a local place where I know actually my daughter went to the place, the, the scene of the crime, the murder scene. She went to that place for ages because it was a um, place which um, was for the girls brigade, we call it, which is like scouts or pioneers, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and so she was, uh, we, we know this place very well. Anyway, my local MP was stabbed and so we needed to have a by-election because he's dead now. And that means you choose a different member of